we're going down a different route today, guys, because we are reviewing a book which is based on real life. This is odd for me. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. On the channel we post writing tips, unboxings, book hauls, book reviews and the occasional vlog. And today I have another book review for you and it is The Salt Path by Raina Wynn. The Salt Path is by a UK author who, for various life reasons, as you'll see when I read the blurb, travelled the Salt Path. Now this is the longest coastal road in the UK down in Cornwall and Devon. It basically goes around the bottom tip of England. My mum had read this book and said that I just had to read it, so she gave me this book. I mean, it's very beautiful. Look at how gorgeous that is. On the back of it, it does say, our world was changing, the edges fading as our journey drew us on between sea, sky and rock. Becoming one with the wild edge, we inhabited our fetch redefined by the salt path we trod. And if you want further proof that I got this book from my mum, look what I found on the inside. How cute are me and my sister. <laughs> Sorry, Nicole, that is now on the internet. I was surprised, and in this review, you'll see why, but let me read you guys the blurb first. Before I get into that, don't forget if you like receive to subscribe to this channel. You're to support means a lot, so thank you guys so much. All right, blurb time. Just days after, Raynor learns that Moth, her husband of 32 years, is terminally ill, their home is taken away and they lose their livelihood. With nothing left and little time, they make the brave and impulsive decision to walk the 630 miles of the sea-swept southwest coast path from Somerset to Dorset via Devon and Cornwall. Carrying only the essentials for survival on their backs, they live wild in the ancient, weathered landscape of cliffs, sea and sky. Yet through every step, every encounter and every test along the way, their walk becomes a remarkable journey. The Salt Path is an honest and life-affirming true story of coming to terms with grief and the healing power of the natural world. Ultimately, it is a portrayal of home and how it can be lost, rebuilt and rediscovered in the most unexpected ways. So with this book to discuss, I don't feel like I can discuss it without giving spoilers. So if you haven't read this book and you don't want any spoilers, then come back to this after you've read it but I'm not gonna do this as a spoiler-free review. First of all, I've already shown you the cover, but look how nice the under the dust jacket is. I just love that color. The first thing, I had tears rolling down my cheek by chapter three, actual tears. So let's go on with some quotes. Page 29, it's a comparison between their two children and I just thought it was brilliant. Their daughter buys them a phone and worries about them, but the son, and this is the quote, our manic star jumping toddler had become too chill for his own good, while the disco dancing glitter queen had turned into my mum. I love it, so their daughter is so worried about them, buys them a phone, wants them to check up all the time, and the son's just like, yeah, have fun, whatever. I just love that comparison. Page 33. This chapter is actually a history of the laws designed against homelessness, and just how odd they are, which is included in this one. These PSPOs have been used for res reasons as varied as the Forest of Dean's strongly phrased ban on nuisance sheep. So sheep are included in being a nuisance because of walking around in a forest. As you read this chapter, you really start to see how ridiculous UK laws are against homeless people and how you can't get out of it. They've just made it so impossible to get out of that you're just gonna be stuck there because of these laws. Page 92. The heat kept rising. On cliff tops with no shade, my cheeks were beginning to feel like leather and my third nose was emerging from the peel. All the way through this book, the passage of time is mostly described through how many noses our protagonist has gone through because for some reason they never get sun cream. It really made me think now that the next time I'm walking the salt path, because we go down there to hike quite often, next time I go there, I'm gonna take extra sunscreen and just hand it out to people because why does no one give homeless people sunscreen? Chapter nine or page 97. So free in fact that he passed his days as the vicar of Moenstro, I'm sorry I'm saying that wrong, walking the lanes and cliff tops in a purple coat, pink hat and yellow cape. We would at least have a bad dress sense in common. A thing I love about this, so as I said at the beginning, chapter three had tears rolling down my face, but there is such humor scattered throughout, it makes it really personal. It's a heavy and yet light read at the same time. 
It was so easy to read and had good bits which made you smile and laugh as well as obviously the weight of what they're actually dealing with. Page 120. From the volume of the snuffling, it could have been a big stew. This is my partner's humour all over. Got the tent up, they're asleep and they think they may have camped on top of a rabbit's warren. So by the amount of snuffling that they can hear, they're presuming there'd be a lot of rabbits. But our protagonist, because she grew up on a farm, her way of thinking about this is there must be so many rabbits that would be a very good stew. And that is exactly what my partner would think. So I'm pescatarian, he is not. That is the first thing he would think of is mm, rabbits for dinner. Page 181. They could have been in a shampoo advert. Just replace the seagulls with parrots and a waterfall. Definitely worth it. This is her description of two Australian guys she meets who are working on the path for the National Trust. And just when they take their helmets off, they're glowing locks. And I just, again, it's just that little hint of humour. Page 230. Bloody hell, love. You should cover yourself up. You'll catch your death. She looked up at Dave, seemingly oblivious to the effect she was having by standing dripping, almost nothing in front of the fishermen who were nearly catatonic. Now, this is my first bad quote. I feel this is blaming an attractive woman for old creepy men staring at her and the idea that, you know, because she's so beautiful, she'll give these old men a heart attack. In my opinion, the old men should turn away and stop staring. She's just come out of the sea. She's been surfing. You've got to get out the wetsuit somehow. And I don't think it's fair to presume that we all have to hide just to get out of our wetsuits. I mean, I have a poncho thing I put on, but you can't do that until you're halfway out the wetsuit. Duh. It's a beach. You're allowed to be in a bikini and you are definitely allowed to get out of your wetsuit. Yeah, I didn't like that. It was, it felt like it was woman shaming, but shaming for being attractive, which is not good. Women being attractive cannot be blamed for men drooling. Page 243, which is my last quote. I want you to have me cremated because I want you to keep me in a box somewhere. Then when you die, the kids can put you in, give us a shake and send us on our way, together. It's bothered me more than anything else, the thought of, of be, us being apart. They can let us go on the coast in the wind and we'll find the horizon together. Just, mm, my heart. I read that and instantly was like, Matt, that's happening. Like. I need, we need to be putting a jar together. Cause they're right. That is the worst thing about a partner dying. It's the separation. Just, oh, I'm so cute. So overall, as I said at the beginning, I do not normally read this type of book. I would not have picked this up by myself. My mom gave me this to read, but I'm really glad she did. I even struggle to watch movies based on true stories because honestly, the world's bad enough. I don't need to see it in my spare time or in books that I read as well. I really did love this one. It felt honest and real, but also with humor and humor sprinkled over it with economics, environmental knowledge, and a couple of life goals at the same time. Like it made me want to hike. It's really easy, calm, and a truthful read. So I gave this book 10 out of 10 stars. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you like seasons that I upload, click that little bell down below. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr. I post you on books, pictures, as well as my writing tips and unboxings on there. If you see this book, I highly recommend picking it up for a bookworm. Honestly, it's just, it was inspiring. It really was. And thanks for watching, guys. Bye.